I'm actually here uh, because of a, a first date. Um, we've all been on those first dates, I'm assuming. Uh, you're nervous, the other person's nervous. They're trying to ask the same old questions. So um, where'd you go to school? What did you do for a living? And eventually you end up with, uh, so how about those Dodgers? But my first date with the man who's now my husband, Will Singleton, was quite different. He suddenly leaned in and said of something very provocative, very provocative question. What, Carrie, do you want your legacy project to be? Caught me completely off guard. I thought he was going to ask if my steak was prepared adequately. <laughs> uh, my legacy project. I realized he's asking me, what do I care about? What impact do I want to have on the world? And I thought for a few minutes about things I've been involved in. Cancer, Habitat for Humanity. There's so many important causes. But what I actually said was entrepreneurship. Wow. He looked a little surprised, but gamely asked, why entrepreneurship? Well, I came from a middle-class family. In fact, my father couldn't afford to go to college, so he joined the Navy so he could attend USC on the GI Bill. He met my mom there, and in 1952, they got married and he graduated from USC. And not too long after, he got a job with a national sales rep company, representing manufacturing companies around the country, it was based right here in Los Angeles. He was doing pretty good with that job. In 1960, the sales manager of the largest, his largest customer, which was based in Tucson, called him up and said, we'd like you to start your own rep company. And we'll give you all of our business nationally, and we'll bring you some more customers on top of that. So my dad quit his job. And a few days later, this sales manager flew him out to Tucson in his little private plane. My dad walked in to talk to the owner of the company, who had no idea about this game plan. So my father said, well, I'm going to need guaranteed $1,000 a month. That's like $8,500 a month in today's dollars. And the, sale, the owner of the company looked at him and said, you've got to be kidding. I have never played a salesman that much, and I'm not going to start now. All right, I'll think about it overnight. So my dad went back to his little motel room in Tucson. I'm sure he was quite nervous, had probably a sleepless night. I mean, he quit his job. He had a wife three small children, had just built his first home, big mortgage, and probably no job. Talk about a face plant. So the next day he went back, talked to the owner of the company again, and they finally agreed that they'd pay, he would pay him $1,000 a month against commissions. Relieved, my dad flew back to Los Angeles, and he and my mother pulled a four-foot folding card table out of the closet, put it in their bedroom, and that was my father's new office. So he traveled around the country, and my mom answered the phone in between piano lessons that she was giving in our home. And a few years later, she joined him on the road, and it turned out she was fantastic at sales, and the two of them made a terrific team. By 1965, they had a real office with a real secretary, they'd hired another salesman, and they were making, in today's dollars, $65,000 a month in commissions. And five years later, we bought that company. And five years after that, we were designing and building our new offices, expanding our manufacturing capability. So when I was a teenager and all through college, in the summers I worked for that company, it was pretty amazing. I learned everything from marketing, sales, purchasing, invoicing, uh, quality control, production, and shipping that product out the door. And two years after college, I joined that company on the executive team. And eventually we won America's Small Business of the Year. Pretty cool. Big change in our family. Now, when I was a little kid, um, our dinner conversations were probably like most families. You know, your parents would ask you, how was school today? How'd you do on that test? Did you have any homework? And then they'd ask us about our little business ventures. So my brother, who was eight years old, was raising chickens behind the corral, and he was delivering fresh eggs every day to all the neighbors. And I boarded horses in that corral. And then my parents would talk about their day at the company, 
the business? What was going on? Did they have new customers, or were they having problems with any of the manufacturing plants? And that, by the way, is my brother, the little egg-selling brother. Um, he's been running that company for the last 20 years. Now, when we were growing up, my parents encouraged us to think about how to solve problems, how to think like an entrepreneur. The first thing is to be curious. See if there's a problem. Can you do something about it? Can it be improved? The next thing is to do your research. Find out what's worked, what hasn't, and why. Next, think outside the box for a solution. And most importantly, determine, do you have the skills to solve this by yourself? Or can you create a team of skilled people from a couple different disciplines? And finally, evaluate the risk. Does it make sense financially to do this? Or if it's an important cause, do you want to put your money, your time, your resources into this? And then, of course, just do it. We all know that slogan. I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, I'm on a date, and I can't seem to stop talking about my family and entrepreneurship and the change it made in our family, and I must be really nervous because I like this guy a lot. Um, but why are we talking about this on our date? So took a deep breath. So Will, what would you like your legacy project to be? And he, without a beat, said, financial literacy. What? Are you kidding me? Like, that is the most boring, dry thing I can possibly <laughs> think of. Of course, I didn't say that to him. Instead, I said, um, well, that's interesting. Why financial literacy? And he said, well, you know, I grew up without any knowledge about personal financial matters. He got his degree, see, he got a degree in English, got his MFA in film, then came over here to Pepperdine and got two more degrees, one in computer science, one in business administration, but it wasn't until he started earning you know, pretty good money, bought his first home, learned a little about his family's ranching and real estate business that he realized how little he knew. And then he started being curious, doing his research. He said, Carrie, do you realize that half of Americans are financially illiterate? I was, I was shocked. I mean, it's not that we're stupid, right? It's just we haven't been taught. So right then and there, on our very first date, we did, was what a very romantic date, obviously. <laughs> Maybe you guys have had some of those too, I don't know. We decided to start the Singleton Foundation for Financial Literacy and Entrepreneurship. I guess that's what happens when you start dating over 50. <laughs> and we got to work to find out what the problem was. Turns out 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and a third of those are millennials. So we decided to ask educated millennials what they knew about money. Let's take a look. Austin. Southern California. Miami, Florida. Dallas. Colorado. New Jersey. Houston, Texas. Los Angeles, California. I'm 20. I'm 20. 22. 26. 30. 33. AP Stats. Calculus. 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 AP Calculus. AP Stats. No idea. Probably 60. Maybe like 100. I don't know what a good credit score is, no. <laughs> what is a credit score? <laughs> uh, probably 8. 24. Maybe 15 to 20, yeah. Probably 15 to 22. Zero. One, I don't know. None. None. Maybe like 20 minutes. Not that much. I should do more, actually. I don't have a budget because I don't have a lot of money. So, I mean, that's probably why I should have a budget. Ah. Uh, oof. Good question. Okay, there's obviously tons of information out there, right? Online, classes you can take. But why, isn't, why aren't people getting this information? Why aren't they doing this? Why don't they know about it? We partnered next with GFLUC, and they did a study, and this is what they learned. The reason that people aren't using all of this information is because it's confusing and overwhelming. 
It's complicated, it's intimidating. But the most important thing we learn is it's taboo to talk about money. It's kind of interesting. Parents don't talk to their children about money. Most schools now teach sex education, but they don't have financial literacy classes. In fact, 47% of most couples do not discuss their financial situation with each other. That's kind of scary, huh? It's interesting to me, coming from an entrepreneurial family, that it's cool to be an entrepreneur, but it's not cool to talk about money. So we decided to think outside the box for a solution. What if we looked at financial literacy from an entrepreneurship standpoint? Will's idea was to make a game. If we learned how to run a business in a game, and then we had to figure out whether to use those profits or not and take them home and pay for housing or food on the table, et cetera, inside of a game, it could be fun. This is an interactive game we're developing. It will be an esports style game with some really amazing prizes. But not everybody's into gaming. In fact, a lot of people are walking around like this. Oh my God, check out this cat video. It is so cool. Oh, I just saw the most amazing music video ever. So we thought, OK, why are they watching this stuff? Well, it's obviously entertaining. And could we use that idea and approach financial literacy, this very boring subject, with entertainment? Well, we live in Los Angeles. So we put, pulled together a team of creative professionals from Disney, DreamWorks, the BBC, Lionsgate, and others. And we put them together with millennial producers to create content that was by millennials for millennials, because remember, they're the ones who are one-third of the work workforce that's living paycheck to paycheck. Now, our first partnership was with somebody a lot of you may recognize, and if you don't, you should check him out. This is one of the most popular names in music today, the DJ Marshmallow, and he's an amazing entrepreneur. He did a video with us this last year called Power, where he tells you the true story of how he got to be a DJ, which is he realized he had to invest in himself. As of this week, it has over 26 million views with 100,000 plus more a day, every day. Let's watch a clip. OK, that's Marshmallow. So obviously, entertainment, getting 26 million views, 100,000 a day, obviously that works. So our next idea was to create a channel. We call it Million Stories. It'll be launching in a few weeks. And we have all different kinds of content. We have everything from comedy, drama, travel shows, cooking shows, you name it. And we have Richard Sherman. OK, I think you know who he is. He's going to the Super Bowl this weekend with the San Francisco 49ers. That's his third time in the Super Bowl. Now, Richard Sherman, who, by the way, is up for the Walter Payton Award uh, right now. The Walter Payton Award is for excellence both on the field and off with someone who's a superstar who's doing excellent work in philanthropy. Richard looks like a guy who's got everything, right? He's making zillions of dollars. But what you may not know about him is that he grew up in a family that lived paycheck to paycheck. He went to Stanford on a football and an academic scholarship. And when he got there, he realized how little he knew. So he is passionate about this subject. And he has created a show with us where he is totally in your face about what you are not doing about your personal finances. Let's watch a bit. I had never seen a debit card in my life until I got one. I learned what overdraft fees were really quick. If I could go back and tell my 18-year-old self anything, I'd tell him to start a savings account. Just don't touch that savings. Don't touch it. Everybody bring it in. This is how we're going to attack your student loan debt. This is how you get out of credit card debt. You're adulting now. So adult. Thanks, Richard. We're really excited that he's on our team. And by the way, after any of our shows, you have access to free online tools. Everything we're doing is free, by the way. Free online tools where you can figure out how to fix your credit score, how to get out of student debt, how to budget, all those things that you're probably not doing. And finally, I wanted to tell you about some more of our shows. But one of the first things I learned when I moved back to Los Angeles a few years ago 
to get into the entertainment industry is that in Hollywood, the first thing they tell you is show, not tell. Half of the American workforce are millennials, but two thirds of us are living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of what we learned was on YouTube. The economy failed, the coal mine shut down. My name is Jason Howes. I run a food truck. My name is Devin Reimer. Started making games. This is American Paycheck. How much I talk to my son about money. Not as much as I should. Nobody teaches you about money in school. Everything goes to my kids, my money, my time, my body, my emotions. Thing is, though, there's no instruction manual for parenting. Hello, this is Lozell. Peter Ramsey. India Kenny Stern. Nancy Liu. I was named Forbes 30 Under 30. I'm one of the directors of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I'm a veteran motion picture stuntman. A three-time Olympic medalist. People were leaving out of my life. I had no job. Epic flop. This is my face plan. Everybody bring it in. This is how we're gonna attack your student loan debt. Step one, know exactly how much you owe. This site built you already. All right, guys, cards aren't bad if you use them responsibly. You're adulting now. Adult! My name is George Igo, and with some research, planning, and a little creativity, I find the best things to do in a city, all without spending more than $100. This is George Goes Everywhere. I'm Danelle Leva. I'm Nancy Liu. I'm Peter Ramsey. I'm Richard Sherman. You better be watching Million Stories now. Watch Million Stories now. I mean, I'm on it, so. Do you remember that the last thing we said about thinking like an entrepreneur was to take the risk? The risk that we've decided to take at the Singleton Foundation is to break the taboo break the taboo about talking about money, and we're going to use entertainment to do it. But it's a risk we think is worth taking because it affects every one of us. It's the economic future of our country and of our world. Thank you. <laughs>